Welcome everybody to another exclusive interview that we have secured here at Credenzio Studios. No other studio could secure it, but we got it done. Today we are interviewing the famous, the infamous, the leader of the Ayyubid Sultan, Belides. Belides, how are we doing today? We are doing good. We are doing good. How are you doing today, Mr. Thunder? Well, I'm just, I'm just swell. It's good to hear from you. Uh, I think everybody here is curious to hear from you. We've got tons of concurrence here watching this live stream. They want to know what's on your mind. You're obviously a controversial figure in Lionhearts. Recently, you've been muted in the Lionhearts server. Is that correct? Could you tell us a little bit about that? Um... I've been recently muted and banned off the game uh, because of my altercations with the judiciary team. Um, I kind of called them a bad word in the Discord server, so I got muted for that. And um, yeah, we continue our uh, altercations with the judiciary team, and we will not back down as a QA team. We're working together. So on top of being the leader of the Ayyubid Sultanate, you're also the leader of the QA team in Credenzio Studios. Uh, tell me ab about that. How hard is it to do your job when you are constantly bickering and getting in trouble with the judiciary team? Um, my job basically is uh, nowhere near the actual game though. So like judiciary doesn't have any leverage on me. My job is... Um, quite uh how can i say this freeze this it's uh might be very like hard, kind of hard since judiciary uh, since qa team is a uh, quality and assurance team and the game has a lot of issues that we need to look at i'm also doing i'm helping in level design building new base wink wink and the um Replacing assets, making stuff more optimized. That's basically my job. Currently, there is a successor war to what some are calling World War Levant, which took place in the summer of 2023. Tell us a little bit about that war. What side are the Ayyubids on, and how is it going for you? Uh, so, uh, you might not know this, but I'm one of the people that created that war um i got france to help the Ayyubid sultanate along with the h okay, uh, we uh i as the Ayyubid sultanate i think i was like a third in command at that time orchestrated the war with hre and the uh, koj so we used that chance to fight the imminent war that the Teutons wanted to declare on us since we uh, basically puppeted them a while ago and they still don't want to forget that. So they, de they declared war on us along with Cyprus and we used that chance to rally all the factions in the game and start the Capetian War. That war lasted, I think, four or five months. I'm not sure, it's like the whole of summer. We were pretty uh, invested in the war as one of the main factions that started it. And now, my understanding is the war has reignited the World War II to World War I, if you will. Tell me a little bit, what's it like on the front right now? How are the Ayyubids faring in the battle? Currently, uh, we are in a war in the southern Levant the bloodiest levant in the game actually we're fighting for the holy roman empire uh which is our ally um they have been our ally for like a year now it's called the sacred crescent alliance um we have been fighting for the holy roman empire for like i think three months now against the templars and the teutons and some do and doing some side quests quests like conquering jerusalem the uh, conquering Jaffa, the vassalizing like the CCA is like a side quest that we're doing. 
And yes, it's going pretty well right now. We own most of Southern Levant. And yeah. Why did you attack the city of Jerusalem? See, it's in my blood as the descendant of Salah al-Din Ayyubi. I'm an Egyptian myself. I'm an ascended, ascend, descended from the uh, great leader, Salah al-Din Ayyubi. So I pushed everyone's limits to be able to conquer Jerusalem. It's one of my dreams and it's one of my claims to, co to own Jerusalem as my base. Historically accurate moment. Speaking of historical accuracy, you have not yet once claimed the city of Cairo. We've heard HRE is your ally, but does it make you upset that your home city of Cairo is in non-Muslim hands? See, that's a point that uh, everyone was stressing about lately, that uh, Cairo is in HRE hands. And... Uh, I must say this, we kind of reclaimed Cairo diplomatically um, since the HRE is our allies, we have been able to use Cairo as a base for uh, a long while now. We don't want to uh, threaten the HRE with anything, anything. We know that they're getting their... Uh, it's no bases are being changed around it's going to be changed around to have something that fits the HRE um so we don't really care Cairo will come back to Ayubids at some point depends on the uh, credence you studio plans and yeah we uh, we use HRE as a way to have Cairo as a base to be able to teleport there and do events there. Would you consider yourself the best faction leader yapper in the diplomacy and diplomatic declarations channel? Um, I'm not a big yapper. There is way worse people, bro. <laughs> uh, the king of England has been the biggest yapper yet, and he's only been king for like a week. And the amount of yapping he does is astronomical. Um, that's the same, I think he's like a caliber higher than the uh, Caliph of Abbasids. And I type in a couple of texts every now and a while, uh, every now and then, uh, if Cog doesn't delete my messages because of our ongoing beef with the Judiciary team. <laughs> so yeah i'm not the biggest yapper yet well the chat disagrees but that's okay you're entitled to your opinion Lord. so my next question is about that king of england he was coronated last week i'm not sure if you were at the coronation it was quite chaotic uh with the stability of king and kingdom of england in question do you feel like the southern levant is a little more tumultuous and unstable than it was under the reign of Furious Wraith. See, the first thing the King of England has done after getting coronated was declare war on the Abbasid Caliphate. You have been streaming a tiny bit of the war, uh, and you also streamed the Siege of Jaffa, where we, where the Abbasids, along with Ayubids and Byzantines, have taken Jaffa, vassalizing vassalizing KOE in 72 hours I think yeah and now KOE has been vassalized that's like one of the first decisions Enceladust has done and that's one of his first mistakes he has done as leader so it's not looking good it's not looking good for the kingdom of England right now it's uh kind of kind of uh, bad right now what do you think has happened in the central Levant following the days of Leozin's retirement, Renshiro taking over as the French leader? Of course, this was months ago. How has this shaped and changed the political dynamic in the central Levant, where your home city of Damascus is? See, I was pretty sad 
that Liu Zhen is being cooped, even though he told us not to interfere with this. Uh, the coup mainly or orchestrated by Renshiro being helped by Janiel. Janiel is a famous artist in the genre. Um, that led to Liu Zhen's death getting cooped by Renshiro. Renshiro is a mid leader. He's not, uh, he's not diplomatically well versed like Leo. So it's been kind of hard dealing with France right now. And that's, uh, yeah, and that's like a common thing with all the factions, not just Ayyubid. It feels like the alliance that uh, Ayyubid had with France ever since the, uh, the Fourfold Crescent War is like dead. Yeah, that's, that's it. My next question... Uh, it sounds like your relationship with France is a little rockier than it was in the summer. Do you trust Renchiro in diplomatic affairs? Yeah, yeah, in diplomatic endeavors against other factions? Not really. He tends to trash talk a lot of people uh, like for no reason, even though we're trying to get something out of that other faction. He just tends to have a sour mouth as you say as you will he has like a bad mouth he trash talks out of people so like i don't trust him or in uh, getting peace for example uh, it's all still done by leo uh, mostly and yeah so like we haven't dealt with france that much ever since ren has become leader could you ever see these tensions boiling over to a war with France and their Byzantine or Northern Levant allies? I'm aware of the alliance called the Northern Triumvirate. I'm not sure if it still goes under that name, but is this an ambition that you would have to seek retribution against Renshiro's running mouth and take the fight to him in the Central Levant? See, this is a good question. Because um, currently we have only one enemy. The one enemy is the Federation. I, we as a faction have been fighting the Federation for more than two, two years now. I haven't fought any other faction other than the Federation factions. So <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm reading chat right now. Um, so yeah, we haven't been fighting any faction as the Ayyubids other than the Federation. They are our mortal enemies. So we don't really think that we can um, fight anyone else until we destroy them fully. That's my goal as the Ayyubid Sultan. Federation is quite powerful. They've existed for a while, and after their victory in the summer of 2023, basically leaving the Capetian Empire in shambles. Do you really think it's realistic to eliminate such a powerful adversary given how stubborn they've been in being defeated in the past? Um, maybe claiming that the Capetian War ended in the Capetian defeat, it's, it wasn't the case. It was basically a white piece with the Ayuba Sultanate returning the uh, rightful garrisons to the Teutons. And that was the peace. Uh, it was basically a white peace. It's not, it's not a loss for the Capetian Empire. And um, we have come pretty close to defeating the, uh, the SBA a couple of times in Southern Levant. I have the manpower, I have the uh, stubbornness needed to match them and overdo them. So uh, I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident. I'm pretty confident in defeating the uh, SBA, which is mainly the, uh, the Federation. They have been in shambles for a while now with the, uh, like three fourths of their factions dead or like fodder material factions. So it's a pretty easy goal to do. It's not as hard as you think. It's interesting saying the Capetian Empire didn't lose the war, given that Acre was sacked and taken, and terms were forced upon the Capetian Empire. 
surely it wasn't a total defeat where they lost everything, but it was clearly not the outcome they wanted. You were a member of that war. Can you speak a little bit more about how devastating it was to have the Treaty of Acre signed when you guys had so much momentum, you'd captured the whole map, you had vassalized all the Federation members, and for them to come back from the grave and force terms upon you must have been quite embarrassing. See, um, it might have been embarrassing since we have been fighting for uh, almost the whole summer. Our factions were uh, kind of tired of fighting at that point because we have been putting them in region battles day after day, two region battles a day with pings and trainings and like basically all faction affairs of the 16 factions were put to halt for this war. Um, and what the Federation did was take breaks mid-war, uh, allowing their bases to be conquered, getting vassalized, and they just came back later with uh, with people to reconquer Acre. The only thing that they did, though, is reconquer Acre. They haven't done anything else. The uh, That's like one base out of the many many bases that were involved in this war so conquering acker was maybe the ending point for it but i won't say i, I wouldn't say that we would have completely lost we could have been we could have went on and be and been sp stubborn in the war but um the leaders were quite tired they wanted to do their faction affairs so we were kind of forced to break apart to sign the treaty. And yeah, uh, we learned we learned from that mistake. Now we're using what we learned from that mistake in our current war. That's why we are winning right now. And uh, yeah, that's what happened, basically. Is there a problem with the way the game mechanics of Lionheart's work towards Forever Wars? making it difficult to actually defeat an opponent? And is there a solution that doesn't involve a faction being forced into inactivity for weeks or months at a time, or face such harsh repercussions from being defeated that they can't, they can never rise again? Hmm, that's a, that's a smart question that a lot of thinking about since, um, Currently, there is no way to force a faction to give up. You can only vassalize them, and they can, when they revolt, revolts are kind of overpowered right now. They need to be nerfed. So, um, no matter how much we fight, as long as one side doesn't concede anything, we can still keep going on. And that's a cycle that needs to be ended somehow. Uh, the game mechanics allow us to be more uh, of like threatening to each other, which is good, but it needs to be harsher in terms of stability and gold. They need to actually matter in the diplomacy, um, since right now, like they don't, no one really cares about gold. No one really cares about stability. And yeah, uh, that's it. I think I think I think the game needs to be harsher, harsher on the people defeated. Could you see a problem arising there where people defeated, their factions collapse, and the game's activity eventually dies because there's no way to rebound from a defeat? There is always a way to rebound from defeat. Uh, maybe it's um, an alliance issue figure out your alliances be they have stronger and better allies that's basically my thing or like uh so i'll give you an example right when the fourfold crescent alliance ended it, the war ended the ayubas kind of <clears throat> got forced into vassalization by france um not a lot of people know this but we have been vassalized by france for about a month now we were basically rallying from like one to five people and then went on to rally 20 25 people during vassalization 
that's like one of the reasons why I'm advocating for uh, harsher conditions because my faction have been vassalized before and uh, we use that time and uh, vas on safety to revive the faction from rallying z like basically non no one to like 20 people plus and then went on to defeat the Seljuk Sultanate and the Cyprus uh, the Cyprus rebellion in their war against us uh it was it was a one time thing i think saturn made an event in, to like get reward the factions that declare war so what the cypriots and seljuks did were declare war on us and uh, us with the alliance with the with the french the french didn't really invest that much time into it but ayubids really pulled 20 25 people to push them back and win that war and yeah that's like one of the biggest examples of why vassalization is kind of good it's not that bad it doesn't really put the game no it is the um the part that you said where it would uh, kill that faction it's not really correct it all depends on the the state of the game and the um, the amount of recruits we get daily so if you get a lot of recruits daily you can always revive revive your faction and destroy that other faction that vassalized you or you can get out of it diplomatically there's always something you can sell you know what i mean so you mentioned revolt should be nerfed oh actually another question coming in let's hear from sarah bro the question for belides the Ray Bro just endorsed three dollars and twenty six cents. When are you going to apologize for the millions of low ranks dead because you lied? All my friends are dead. All my tonics stolen in infinum zones. Uh, I don't even see know if what you going to ask. A question. Did you hear that? Uh, no, I didn't. Can you read it out for me, please? Sure. He said, "Why are you, when are you going to apologize for all the millions of low ranks dead, all of my friends that are dead, all the tonics that were stolen? Look, it's only the price of four, C3. I have managed to put many people at risk and have put many lives down to win wars. It's only what leaders do. War is a bad thing. We need to end war. But we also need to end tyranny. If we do not win wars, the tyranny will keep going on and slowly but surely people will stop playing the game because of the amount of uh, oppression that factions get from the Federation you see it's it's a bigger you need to look at the bigger picture right it's either we all stop playing the game because of the mega alliances and the like amount of amount of amount of stuff that we have to keep <laughs> that, <laughs> that we have to keep holding on to is uh, is absolutely insane so we have to either win the war by keep on playing like we have to win the war by playing the game or not even fight at all killing the game which is like the main point right now bigger stakes yeah basically what jenny is saying so you believe the federation is a tyranny and that's your just that's your cast's belly for going to war against them. Tell me, why is the Federation a tyranny? Why do you hate them so much? Um, what, what about the Federation makes your and so many other skin crawl? The, the Federation is not the problem. The problem is mega alliances. We do not want mega alliances. We want to go back to an uh, age where uh, we can fight 2v2 wars 2v2 wars like for example the sba versus the uh, the sca for example you see 2v2 wars are the pinnacle of line hearts if you don't realize it's where when line hearts were uh was the most active 
it was when the 2v2 wars were actually a thing. So that's why we need to end mega alliances. And the only way to end mega alliances is destroying them. Bringing back the 2v2 wars that actually made the game more active and made the factions more involved in the war. And how do you see, from a, from a development standpoint, is there something that needs to be done? Because we already have alliance restrictions. You can only ally one or two factions. It's vassalization that allows for mega alliances to really occur. So what what is your solution? You, do you plan to just conquer them into submission? You, you plan, what I'm hearing is, is quite a crazy plan. You, Belides, Ayyubid Sultan, in accordance with HRE, plan to go into Federation territory, conquer them into submission, even though this hasn't worked in the past with much greater numbers than you have now, and hope that the Federation breaks up as a result of this? It's not really uh, the... I don't really want to reveal our plans yet. But it's not really the first part that he said, we, like conquering them. I know it's not going to put on pressure. There's other stuff that we are using to um, very, very secret stuff that we are using to put keep on pressure on the Federation. It's only pressure from all sides. It's not only pressure from one side. So that's what we're uh, doing right now. It, at some point, it will happen trust the process it's a plan that uh i have been thinking about for a very long time just like the many other plans that happened including the capetian war the ayubid nook in, in my opinion the, the federation emerged stronger out of the capetian war than they went in i i i i feel like you could say a little more. Can you give us a hint about these secret plans? Because I'm really curious on how you plan to break up one of the most powerful coalitions in Lionheart's history. I'm just going to say that statecraft exists. I cannot leak any. We, we've got another. We've got another comment coming in from TTS. Terebro just endorsed three dollars and twenty six cents. Air Ubids have achieved weapons of mass destruction. Meet. You must stop him. Terebro says, Ayubids have achieved weapons of mass destruction. Myth, you must stop him. Well, given, given that you have developer those. access, I wouldn't be surprised if you did insert weapons of mass destruction <laughs> into Karak and Who knows? Malbork. Who knows? How the Federation has been refusing to accept my interviews so far. Uh, I'm hoping to rask, this is a call out, to ask, are you going to come and face the music? Are you going to come and be interviewed? Or are you going to keep letting me interview non-Federation leaders talking smack about your guys' plans? We really need to hear from Tarask on this. But this isn't an interview with Tarask. This is an interview with Belides. So we'll have to get back on that point. Belides... <clears throat> I have a question about your training rituals, the way that you regiment your men. How have you turned Ayubids into a force to be reckoned with? Now, it's true in the past Ayubids have been formidable, but they've also had periods of inactivity where they haven't been that impressive. I would say right now they're one of the more powerful factions in the game, and you've been a big part of that. So tell us a little bit about your recruiting strategies and just how you've built up the Ayubids to be a force to be reckoned with in the Levants. Uh, see, uh, the Ayyubids, as you have said, have been pretty dead for the past two years, maybe. We have been plagued with the Rothwards, bad sultans after bad sultans. Pretty bad decisions have been taken on our side until uh, me and I don't know name guy have uh, taken over taken over the faction. We have improved the faction from at least from like rallying five to rallying twenty plus, but. Ayubids don't really put their uh, power into numbers. You see, it's the I have I emphasize on like the most important thing in the game. We want more quality than quantity. The Ayubid power doesn't lie in numbers. 
it lies in on skill skill is one of the main things that's why it was the um it was pretty upsetting to see omar putting me on like c tier when i'm like destroy i destroy him consistently anyways <laughs> it's like one of the main thing that we focus on is skill uh we we also like encourage people to uh join ayubit trainings to learn from us we are one of the most trained people in the game uh since recruiting is kind of um uh, dead right now we focus all of our power on diplomacy and skill tr skill training yeah I would assume that's because of paid access that made recruiting a little bit more difficult right now. Um, what has been the effect on paid access for you guys? Um, the thing is, Ayubids have always been a um, not very popular faction since most people either joined Teutons or Templars. That's how it just uh, that's how it is with the uh, with Lionhearts. So we go we. Um, employ other strategies to recruit our members. Um, it's pretty controversial. Um, either just attracting new people or maybe cross-recruiting, maybe. I'm not sure about that point. I've seen some of my members do it. <clears throat> but um, yeah, that's how we mostly gain people but the uh, main main power of ivis are in the loyal people in it they have been doing a great job of being uh, of being more consistent and just being active <clears throat> we haven't gotten new pl new players in some time now so um i want to thank the uh, current hrs and the mrs in the faction for uh, helping me keep this together keep going to war and other stuff they have been supporting me in a lot in like everything so i want to thank them for that what do you think lionheart's most needs to attract new players and get over the top hmm it's uh, more of a combination of uh, of things. Uh, Line Horse is a pretty good game, but uh, what made it popular is its um, simplicity and how simple it was since the uh, Tankfish era and the um, and right now actually. So it didn't really require that much brain cells to play. So that's what attracted a lot of people. That's what Roblox is. And depending on Roblox's ambitions, we might um, be way, way better in terms of players. So that's like that's my vision. It's like I can't really explain this. There's a lot of combinations of stuff that needs to be done. Uh, to get more players, but since the quarantine, the Roblox uh, ambitions have been moved towards uh, more of a short-term games, like uh, what you call it, the um, tycoons and stuff, and they have been uh, advertising for other games that n are not really useless. They're just like cash cash cow games they don't really want uh genres like this to thrive but with our ambitions and with our uh studio we might we might pull through a lot of players uh also with good advertisement we might get uh loads of players to play the game again and that's what i think insightful answer belides <clears throat> We know you have some important quality assurance duties you have to take care of today, as the game is currently down to, to some database issues. Uh, so I'm just going to ask you one final question. <clears throat> Do you have anything to say to all the Belides fans out there 
all the Ayyubid soldiers that look up to you, the Sultan, for advice, for wisdom, as a, uh, the epitome of what it is to be a leader. You're a role model for them. What do you have to say to your men? I only, I only want to thank them for their, for their efforts. Number one, loyalty is the first tenant of the Ayyubid, uh, Ayyubid Sultanate. We have been blessed with many soldiers that are loyal to us. I want to thank them again. I want to, for any other Bolides fans and Bolides haters, I know there's a lot of haters out there. Beat me in 1v1 and I will retire. That's what I'm saying. You got, like, y'all are haters. Can't really come at me when you're, oh, my f I'm choking, I'm choking. <laughs> there's a lot of haters. The federations are pretty toxic. be clear you're not you're rescinding your <laughs> your offer to 1v1 and you'll retire that was I'm that rescinding. was a, that was a joke no i'm not i'm not joking i'm actually looking for someone to like that actually hates on me to win a 1v1 and you won't retire but you're no. trying to prove to them that you have skill i will retire i will retire because that's how bad my haters are the all my haters are actually bad at the game. Ah, so you're serious about this? I'm serious about this. If if no one can one v one me, and win against me, wow, there's, there's a lot of haters out there. That's why. I uh, I guess I have to ask another follow up question. Are you concerned about your legacy? What kind of legacy do you want to leave in Lionhearts? You see these great leaders that have come before you, Hero Doctor, Gosmacon. What legacy do you want to leave in Lionhearts? And that'll be my final question. See, my goal is to be the person who conquered Jerusalem into a Ubid ownership. That's the, my final goal in this genre before I retire. And be possibly the greatest Ayyubid Sultan to ever uh, come across. Even though um, it won't, it will be hard since I'll have to pass uh, Tankfish era Sultans. But I know it's possible. Our effect on the genre can be wide. We can do a lot of stuff as Ayyubids, and I believe in our power. Thank you for joining me for this interview. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe below. If not, leave a dislike and tell us why this content could be improved in the comments below. We'll see you guys in the next one.